Hi friends, Tracy here from TracyPartridgeJohnson.com. I decided to try the carnivore diet. So, um, I thought I'd give you a little update on how that's going so far and what I'm thinking about that. I started yesterday um, and the reason I decided to give it a try, some of you may have heard of the carnivore diet. It sounds pretty extreme and it kind of is a little bit extreme. A lot of people say that it's the ultimate elimination diet because you're eliminating any foods from your routine that you would consume normally that might cause you digestive distress. And that's part of the reason that I'm doing this is because, so a little backstory, those of you who followed me know that I have, um, I have really kind of toyed back and forth between whole food plant-based and keto, low carb, um, mostly for um, weight loss purposes but also for health and longevity. So, um, it hasn't been that long since I was doing whole food plant-based, and caveat, I love doing whole food plant-based. I love it. I love the food. I don't really miss meat or animal products when I'm eating whole food plant-based. Um, and so, it's not the food, it's not that I, I feel a sense of deprivation or anything when I'm doing whole foods, um, plant-based. It is that I started having a lot of digestive distress um, when I was eating plants. And I've noticed more and more lately that um, I get a lot of like cramping and bloating and gas and diarrhea which is awful especially you know when you share a bed with someone and you know and it starts really impacting your quality of life because damn if you know what I mean so anyway um I was really getting to a point where I couldn't eat a bunch of plants because whenever I eat plants I just would have those problems like I love broccoli that's kind of always been my go-to but I've noticed that um, when I eat it whether I put whether I slather it in butter or not it causes me digestion problems you know I get really crampy and bloating same with any like cruciferous vegetables so um, like cabbage, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, all of which I love, but again, it causes, it really doesn't agree with me, and I've known for the longest time that I really can't eat legumes and lentils because of the same thing, it just causes me so much digestive distress, um, I just get bloating and gas and cramps so much, no matter how long I, you know, over what period of time that I eat them, you know, whether I do a small amount or a large amount, it really doesn't matter. I always get digestive distress of legumes. So, but more recently, with it being fall and the weather cooling down and everything, I, I, I was raised by an amazing cook. My mom baked like crazy and so I which I loved growing up I thought it was awesome but now I'm kind of rethinking because wheat is, it seems to be a problem for me and I never really realized that I didn't realize I, that wheat was a problem um until recently when I had gone without it for a long time you know I hadn't been eating wheat or grains much but on whole food, plant-based, especially following like Dr. John McDougall's program, um, well, any any whole foods, plant-based, where it's um, low fat, high carb, um, 
you can consume grains, whole grains. And so um, I started baking bread from scratch uh, with organic flour and, you know, um, like honey for sweetener and, you know, only using olive oil, not using any seed oils and stuff. And um, man, I started to have a really bad reaction um, to the wheat. So I had to cut that completely out of my diet. And that's really the primary thing that got me thinking about moving over to a, a carnivore diet. And the reason, the biggest reason for me is astonishingly, um, man, I started having some anxiety issues and some insomnia issues and like, you know, like inability to sleep at night. Like seriously, like consistently night after night, I went several days there without being able to go to sleep. Um, and so uh, I was having to start taking like antihistamine every night and I just, I, I went like, you know, 40 hours at a time without any sleep and that was just unacceptable. I was so exhausted and mentally, psychologically, physically. So I just decided, I, you've probably, if you're familiar with carnivore, you've probably heard about Jordan Peterson and his daughter Michaela and um, all of the health issues they've had and how much success they've had in reducing their symptoms by following a carnivore diet. Uh, they do meat only, like, you know, mostly like red meat only. And I, you know, that is a little bit too extreme for me. So I decided to give it a try. Um, and I have to admit, I my um, stress levels are a lot lower. And, um, oh, so the benefits that I'm seeing already um, from changing my diet to a more carnivore diet is that, so a couple of things, big significant changes, uh, benefits for me in changing to a carnivore diet is, and I'm not saying that I'm gonna do this long term. This is a short term um, experiment for me to see if I actually do see improvement. So, um, anyway, the things that I have found to be an improvement are, oops, darn it. Um, sorry, I am looking for a parking place. The things that have improved for me have been significantly, um, probably the most significant two things already that I've noticed just in really cutting out plants mostly um, are no more bleeding gums. I was having bleed, not like severe bleeding gums, but when I would, um, when I would floss my teeth, my, my gums would bleed. And then the other thing is that I have had this rash on my feet that has been really um, troublesome and worrying for me. And um, it's gone. It's just gone ever since, just in the last few days since I've been eliminating um, plants from my diet and focusing mostly on animal products. So here's the thing. I have always been lactose intolerant. Like I, it's, it's not severe, but I get clogged up and I have like a perpetual sniff. Like I'm always sniffing um, because my sinuses are always dripping and you're clogged and everything. So it's just like, this has been something that I've noticed over the last several months is that I'm just, I sniff all the time like that. See? Um, so anyway, um, and that still is present. That hasn't gone away yet. But here's the thing. I decided to go ahead and eat cheese. So I'm not having dairy. I was having some dairy. Like heavy cream. I was putting heavy cream in my coffee, which coffee is the one thing that's plant-based that I'm still allowing myself that everybody who I've listened to that's carnivore has coffee. So, um, 
so I was putting heavy cream in my coffee, but that was the only thing, except for the other day, I went, I had gone without any dairy for quite a while, and a couple of days ago, probably three days ago now, I put, um, th I had three slices of cheddar cheese, and when I say slices, I mean I bought the pre-packaged, pre-sliced um, cheddar cheese, and it's good quality cheddar cheese, it's Tillamook, um, and I put that on hamburger patties for my evening meal, and immediately I could tell that it was not agreeing with me, like I started feeling crampy and cloggy and just really feeling crappy so I that was a great experiment because I found out nope you know I'm not gonna do dairy dairy does not agree with me the one thing that is dairy ish that I have constantly consistently is butter grass-fed butter and sometimes not grass-fed but just butter regular butter but um that seems to be fine, and so I have butter coffee. I'll blend butter into my coffee in a high-speed blender, and I also still allow myself some MCT oil or some coconut oil. But already, I've noticed that my gums are better. I'm not, I'm not having bleeding gums, and that rash on my feet, which it was. I wish I'd taken pictures because it was getting pretty bad. So much so, I like to have pedicures. I didn't want to go to have a pedicure, um, because it was on my toes, on the side of my foot, especially on my right foot, and um, it was making like my skin peel and stuff because it was so rashy and bumpy. It was, it was pretty bad. Um, it didn't really hurt or bother me, um, as far as like the way it felt, um, it didn't really bother me, which is kind of astonishing because it was kind of red and, and thickish, rashy. And it wasn't all over the whole foot, it was just splotchy. Um, but it's gone now, so I was just like, wow, that is so cool that that is gone already and my gums are not bleeding anymore. So those are two things. And also the other, another thing, and this is a big thing, some, um, I had a little bit of breakout right here on my chin, which what on my cheek, which, um, I rarely get, but it was staying constant. But my, um, my, my spots, my age spots are starting to, to fade. I'm not kidding. It's not like placebo, placebo effect or anything. It's seriously starting to fade. So anyway, um, those are my improvements that I'm seeing already eliminating plants from my diet. So I'm Scandinavian. I'm, I'm Swedish on my mom's side. And um, her mom was born in Stockholm and uh, the first one to emigrate to this country. And her, uh, and on my dad's side, he's all British and everything. So I'm definitely Northern European through and through. And the thing I figured out is, about plants is that my DNA was not formed on tropical plants, you know? There, there are no bananas or mangoes or grapefruit or oranges or limes or lemons or, you know, any number of those kind of foods in the environment where my ancestors um, come from and where my DNA was formed. So, I don't know about that whole blood um, blood type diet thing, but it does make a lot of sense to me that I, my body would thrive or do best on the foods that my DNA was formed with, formed on. So anyway, that seems to be holding true. I, I, and I think that, you know, they're based on your DNA and, and your ancestry and stuff, your, um, your heritage, there are probably people that do do better on, you know, foods that, you know, tropical foods, if their ancestors come from that part of the world. And, you know, those who do better on protein and less plants. And so, so anyway, it seems to be proving true in my life so far already. Anyway, I, I'm definitely doing better. Um, as far as, you know, symptoms that I was having are concerned. So I'm still like having a challenge with sleeping, but I am sleeping anyway. The, the anxiety and stress is kind of diminished a little bit. It's not as bad as it was like last week or so. So that's all good. 
And, you know, any concerns that um, people might have over, like, heart health and diabetes and everything else, low carb is, like, really good, proven, like, there's so much data documenting that reducing insulin um, helps with diabetes for sure. Um, heart disease, I don't know for sure, but the one, the one thing that re does reassure me is I'm seeing the positive benefits on the outside, you know, well, in my gums, that's on the inside, and on my feet and stuff and my skin. So if my exterior of my body is showing visible signs of benefit, then I have to believe that my internal organs are also benefit benefiting. That's just, you know, I'm just deductive thinking, right? I'm just, since I have no other, nothing else to go on, I haven't had blood tests done for quite a while. I probably should go and have blood tests done. But a doctor is going to freak out because my cholesterol is probably going to be high But um, on this kind of diet. But there is a lot of um, conflicting information about that, too. Um, supposedly, women, should, women, generally speaking, do a lot better with cholesterol, higher cholesterol in their systems uh, to, regular, to regulate hormone function and everything else. And I know that my hormones have been out of whack for a long time. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm, uh, as long as I'm feeling better and I'm seeing positive results in my body, then I'm going to keep doing this. Um, it does get a little bit monotonous the food but I will save that for another video and I'm just gonna go for now and run in I'm, I've got to go in and get some more meat because I'm out of meat so I'm at the grocery store getting ready to go in and shop and that's one thing that does um, get really simplified is shopping you know you're not buying a whole bunch of stuff you're just buying animal products. So I'll try and share more uh, um, with pictures of what I'm eating. I did take a picture of um, my main meal yesterday and I'll try to um, include that in a video at some point in time. But anyhow, um, that's all for now. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm starting this um, carnivore challenge and I'm not exactly sure how long I'm going to do it. It really depends on how I feel. But today is day two. It's 1.18 in the afternoon. I haven't had anything to eat yet today. I've only had a little bit of butter, co butter coffee. So um, anyhow, that's where I'm at with all of that. So I will keep you posted on my experience and we'll see how long this lasts. Until next time, thanks for, uh, Thanks for watching, and if you haven't subscribed and you like this content, please do subscribe and hit the, you know, the little notification bell so you know whenever I do upload new content, um, which right now isn't very consistently <laughs> or very frequent, but I'll try to do better. <laughs> Until next time, take good care. This is Tracy Partridge Johnson signing off.